think about, uh, it's kind of a longer view, uh, what a crisis situation that the world is in right now. And I've just been spending the past couple of days at a conference at, at the Trobe uh, regarding the um, Asia and Europe kind of in the squeeze between the, the um, United States and radical Islam. And that, uh, and there's a broad consensus, of course, that um, as legitimate as the concern about these uh, radical Islamist movements are, that the, uh, the policies pursued by the United States uh, are certainly making the matters far worse. And one thing that I, I tried to stress in my presentations was that if the United States does not, um, I mean, with all the ec enormous economic and political uh, power that, 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 the, that the U.S. has, refuses to play by the rules, uh, why, should, why should anybody else? And so, in many ways, international law is under a greater threat now than, than, uh, uh, than, than perhaps it has, has, has ever been in the modern era. I mean, obviously, the invasion of Iraq and related issues there come from foremost, but um, I, I think about you know, what, what would happen if indeed somehow, uh, and it's not for lack of trying, that France and the United States was able to get a, a, a majority of the Security Council without a veto to accept, for example, Morocco's autonomy plan. Yeah, it would be the, you know, essentially you know, the, the first time uh, since the establishment of the United Nations of uh, the UN system where a, a territory's expansion by force uh, has, uh, in an annexation of, 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 of a territory like that, has been, been a recognized, clearly very, very dangerous precedent. And so what is really, I mean, I, I've been to the camps, I've been to the occupied territories, I, I, I do have a strong moral commitment uh, to the people of Western Sahara. But what motivates me even more to speak out on this issue is that it, it, um, the, the ramifications of Morocco getting away with its, uh, um, its occupation, I think, are, are go well beyond uh, the fate of the people there and, and, and much of the international order uh, as a whole. Um, it, it's, um, I was very, uh, I was quite happy to, to be part of this conference uh, in The Hague last year that put together uh, Together, this book. Uh, appropriate, of course, it was in, in The Hague. Uh, but also, that, that uh, many of the people who were involved in the East Timor struggle have recognized that there are many very similar issues at stake here. And uh, so, it's only appropriate that, that Australia, that, that, did, that where, where the ordinary citizens um, did so much to uh, successfully change your government's uh, uh, reprehensible policy uh, to one. Uh, away from supporting the, the invasion occupation to, to playing, uh, playing a role and finally freeing that country, I think is something that we all can learn from. Uh, certainly there are parallel movements in the United States, which I was part of actually, uh, and uh, Canada and uh, Britain as well. I think it kind of underscores something that that's real, real important, is that even if one takes a very cynical view about uh, far, uh, foreign policies of various nations, uh, the real politic, the, the how countries will you know, look after their own, own perceived geopolitical interests, regardless of uh, you know, legal and moral concerns. Uh, even if you assume governments are amoral, uh, people are moral. And that uh, you know, people can organize and people can raise these kind of issues, and, and especially in the situation of supporting an a, 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 a illegal and moral uh, military occupation, people have a hard time um, uh, supporting that. And um, it, it's 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 interesting because uh, in my um, in, in my chapter in this book, I, I um, and it's actually a, it's based in part on a more detailed chapter I did for another book uh, called Right Sizing the State: um, the, the Politics and the of um, Contracting Borders, that was published by Oxford University Press a few years ago. Um, uh, Brendan O'Leary and Iron Lustig. Um, I I looked at I looked at this question: Why did um, I mean, 12 years ago, one would see, well, looks like Western Sahara is going to have a referendum that's going to be resolved. East Timor, however, is a hopeless cause. Um, it's, it's, uh, um, and if anything, things have gone the other way around. And why is this the case? And part of it has to do, unfortunately, with the fact that the uh, Moroccan regime has a lot more at stake uh, politically in holding on to Western Sahara than um, in, uh, um, Indonesia ever had in holding on to East Timor. Uh, at the same time, um, and, and, you, know, you, you know, there are certain advantages in the sense that Western Sahara is recognized as a sovereign nation state by uh, 75 uh, governments. It's got you know, support by you know, 
some prominent uh, uh, third world parties such as Algeria, South Africa. Uh, they, um, they have a you know, landmark world court decision uh, on their side. Uh, the UN has, as inadequately as it may have been, has at least tried to address the issue to some level. Um, whereas, of course, in East Timor, he may realize like, who recognized East Timor? Maybe in Mozambique and even the South, I think that was about it. Uh, that, you know, where, whereas uh, the, organization, uh, the African Union, as Western Tower is a uh, full member state, obviously ASEAN didn't want to touch the issue. Um, I mean, they, in many ways, uh, you know, Weston's Harris in a better position diplomatically than, than East Timor ever was. But, but the thing that East Timor also had, that Weston's Harris not had yet, is this um, uh, multinational solidarity uh, community. I mean, there's a lot of activity in Europe, but, it's, but in Australia it's been somewhat limited, the United States uh, even, even more limited. And it's really critical, I think, that we, that we raise awareness on this issue and, 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 and that people know about the importance of it. And I think we also have an important talking point that a lot of people forget about, and that the um, um, one thing to Paul Sawyer's credit is that they have never engaged in terrorism. You know, they, um, you know, soon after the Moroccan takeover, they brought their, some of their smartest people and, uh, and, 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 trained, and had them sent to Europe to be trained in international law. Um, you know, the, the uh, guerrilla struggle was you know, geared solely towards the Moroccan occupation uh, forces. They did not go around murdering collaborators or, or, or attacking civilians. And, and, he, and then they agreed to this uh, ceasefire with the understanding there would be a referendum, even though um, they were lied to, essentially. You know, it didn't come to place, it didn't, didn't uh, come to pass. They have recognized that uh, um, just the, the strategic reality makes the reduction of arms struggle uh, difficult. They, redouble their efforts on the diplomatic front. But more importantly is what we're seeing in Western Sahara now is, is the resistance of the population itself. A, a kind of a non-violent intifada has been uh, going on and off. I was in the occupied territories last January and met with some of the leaders and, and was very impressed with their stories. And they suffered so much. I mean, uh, uh, beatings, torture, I mean, all sorts of terrible things. But uh, they keep on, 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 on coming. And they, and they, um, very creative uh, attacking. So we've seen how nonviolent resistance has um, you know, overthrown um, dictatorships from the Philippines to Serbia to um, you know, Bolivia uh, to um, Madagascar to much of Eastern Europe and and and, and, uh, and even Indonesia. I mean, uh, I mean Suharto had more blood in his hands than Saddam Hussein. He got to, yeah, um, students and others out in the streets were able to force, force that regime down finally. And, and so I, it's, it's important that they've recognized the power that uh, nonviolent struggle has. I actually engaged in a workshop uh, with some of the leading activists in Mauritania um, uh, uh, earlier this year and got to hear more about, uh, about, about uh, the, the creative struggle. My favorite uh, example is um, you know, the, um, any display of the, uh, of the Western Tower flag, of course, is, uh, is, is forbidden. And, if anybody you know, writes it on a wall or something, you know, they, you know, the troops are immediately there and um, uh, spray painting over it. Or, and if anybody's caught you know, with a um, flag or even spray paint or whatever, they're in big trouble. And uh, they, they end up getting, like a lot of North African cities, like even has a large number of feral cats. And they got these little paper flags and take on the tail. Of the cats, and so you had these um, Moroccan troop, troops, and they're heavy right, you know, running through the alleys in a vain effort to try to capture these cats and, and uh, get the uh, get the flags all over their tails. 